This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Dave McCann. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Friday, December 3rd, a final four Friday, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who I think has a pretty good southern accent, Dave McCann. I went on my mission to Texas, so I know y'all and Armadillo. <laughs> And that's it, and that's right up there close to that former Notre Dame head coach. Oh, my goodness. Brian Kelly addressing the LSU crowd at a basketball game last night. And at first I thought it was a joke, but then I realized <laughs> that it wasn't a joke, Dave. You he's, just get that one chance to make a first impression. This is what he decided to do. He's trying to endear himself to fans with a fake Southern accent. <laughs> that's not going to work out down there. You know what? <laughs> Maybe Notre Dame didn't want him after all. I don't, I don't know. Based on the reaction their new head coach got, Marcus Freeman, maybe the Irish are feeling just fine. I don't recall him giving an Irish accent when he was hired at Notre Dame. (laughs) So he's really changing it up. He certainly did not. We wish him the best. Here's your Friday show lineup, accents and all. BYU football awaiting their bowl game destiny. Hanging on to slim New Year's Six hopes. If it's not a major bowl game, what's the next best scenario for the Cougars? Greg Rubel joins the program to discuss that and a Final Four preview for BYU women's soccer on their revenge tour. Plus, Al Bronco Mendenhall's sudden resignation at Virginia might just impact BYU. And tournament opener for BYU women's volleyball. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Sounds like this should be a two-hour show today. Right? Isn't it? It's loaded. Of stuff. Four-seeded BYU soccer begins the College Cup, or Final Four, as they face WCC rival Santa Clara in the semifinal match tonight. Cougars lost back on October 30th at Santa Clara 1-0. So the revenge tour continues. You can listen to tonight's match on BYU Radio and the app with coverage at 9.30 Eastern Time. Also on ESPNU for those of you who, who like to watch. Senior midfielder Michaela Coulihan, a prominent star of BYU women's soccer, earns her third consecutive first-team All-America citation, fourth All-America nod overall. She's the first ever at BYU in a storied history to achieve those marks four years running. Her teammate and senior forward Cameron Tucker earns her first All-America honor, a third-team nod. Five BYU players were named to the NCAA Division I women's All-West region team, including... Coulihan, Tucker, Leveni Vaca, and Jamie Shepard, all first-team selections on that West squad with goalkeeper Cassidy Smith named to the third team. Is Coulihan the best ever at BYU? She just might be. We'll talk with Greg about that. 11 seed volleyball is in action tonight, hosting Boise State, first round of the NCAA tournament. Cougars entered the tourney. They got jobbed on the seed that should have been much better than that, and they've only lost once, and that was at Pitt back in September. Pitt ranked third all season long. BYU, if they were to beat Boise tonight, they'd face the winner of the Utah Utah Valley match, which takes place before the Cougars and Broncos at the Smith Fieldhouse. BYU, Boise State, 9 Eastern time, coverage on ESPN plus and the plus means you've got to pay yes i hate it when it's <laughs> oh plus. calculated <laughs> jerem jordan and amy gant will call those matches for espn plus but you still got to pay because it's not on byu tv you got to pay i'm glad you Come brought on. up Pitt too because if byu continues to win they just might see the only team that has beaten them in the elite eight interestingly they got beat by Pitt at Pitt without their star player uh, Taylor Ballard Frank. Nixon. Yeah. yeah. Let's get the full. I think they'd there, like huh? to get back together. Sure. 12th ranked BYU men's basketball not playing with a full accoutrement on their roster, but they still got to tip off at Missouri State tomorrow for Eastern. Tune in live on the BYU Sports Network and BYU Radio. Jason Shepard and Mark Durant on the call. A bounce back opportunity for Mark Pope's guys. Yeah, and a must. They can, they can keep him in the top 20. Sure. That's a, that would be a good quad one win. Former BYU head coach Bronco Mendenhall announcing that he's stepping down after the bowl game from the University of Virginia. Surprised a lot of folks, including his staff. He left for Virginia six years ago. Went 36 and 38, went to the Orange Bowl in 2019. That's one of the reasons they love him back there. Bronco said, clearly this week there was a sense of clarity to me that I needed to step back from college football and reassess, renew, reframe, and reinvent with my wife as my partner, our future, and the next chapter of our lives. This was my decision. 
it's a different direction from all the coaches who are grabbing lots of money mm. the last couple of weeks for Bronco. He's he's grabbing his life back. I love what Dennis Dodd, a reporter for CBS, said this morning. Bronco Mendenhall walked into his team room. He quit on his team like the situations at Oklahoma and Notre Dame, and that's where the similarities stopped. Right, right. Just a very different situation. And Bronco's going to do what's best for Bronco. He's always done that. Um, and for whatever reason, this is what he thinks the right thing to do, and, and he has the guts to do what he thinks is the right thing to do. A sure. lot of people do not. Much more on that to come and uh, what we think might be happening for Bronco Mendenhall and what happens to his staff. Could yeah. some of them make their way back to BYU? On to Cougars in the NFL, Taysom Hill. Nice shirt today, by the way. Thank you very much. Back in Texas, or against the Texas team, I should say, in New Orleans, but doing the same thing, leaping over defenders in a New Orleans Saints loss to the Dallas Cowboys. Hill, 19 for 41, 264 yards, couple of touchdowns, four interceptions. Oh, that killed my fantasy team. <sighs> And the aforementioned beautiful hurdle in the loss to two of those picks were tip balls. Two of them were bad. Yes. Yeah. And are we still calling Dallas America's team? I joked about that yesterday. They still I... call themselves. <laughs> I think they're at like something point something billion dollars, which is the richest team, according to Forbes. So maybe that still makes them. OK. Maybe All the right. world's team. Taysom ran for over 100 yards. He's the third quarterback this season to do so in the NFL. Other notes from the NFL, Zach Wilson and the New York Jets host the Philadelphia Eagles. Fred Warner and the 49ers travel to Seattle. And Jamal Williams in an increased role at running back, the number one guy. He and the Lions are looking for their first win against the Minnesota Vikings. How about Zach against Taysom next Sunday? December 12th. That's going to be fun. 21st ranked BYU women's basketball team. They're 7-0. They take on the Utes tomorrow in Salt Lake. Jeff Judkins returning to the sidelines, too, back from COVID. I talked with him. He is excited to be back. He was out, and they went on and won three very big games. And now he's back, and they're number 21. He can walk in the door and go, hey, you guys are in the top 20. I wasn't coming back here until you guys yeah, were in the exactly. top 25. Yeah, exactly. Now you're ranked. You finally listened to me, so I'm just, I'm going to be back. We talked to Paisley after the UVU game where she was there cheering on her husband, Connor. And uh, they're excited to go up there and play the Utes. Fantastic. The best. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. Bowl game destinies determined this Sunday for 84 different college football teams. It's like the NBA. <laughs> 42 bowl games. BYU of certainty will be in one of those. You know, and some people say, are there too many bowl games? I say absolutely not. Just more more Just, football. I love having one on every day, sometimes two or three. More football. Put them on. Give me Central Michigan and Toledo. I'll watch it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Sunday night, specifically, BYU will know where they're going bowling. Hope remains alive for a New Year's Six scenario in the yeah. Fiesta Bowl. Maybe if the cards fall right with the four games that we outline and the results that need to happen on Championship Saturday. But if that does not happen, Dave, what are you looking for in a bowl game for BYU not named the Fiesta Bowl? And I think it's okay if you don't get in the New Year's Six. Uh, your rebuilding year with a kid that came in with two starts, didn't play last year. Yeah, a rebuilding year. A rebuilding year. Number ten 12. and two. Maybe the best season ever. Oof. against the schedule they played. Uh, I just want to play a, uh, another P5. Okay. I don't even care where it is. An eighth power five. If it's the Independence Bowl against LSU, that will be a lot of fun. Uh, so for me, that's what, what I'm looking for. It would be great to be have a bigger bowl like on the 28th or 29th where you have prime time to yourself, which, which ESPN does with a lot of those bowls through that week. So th I guess that's what I'd love against a P5. But if you've got to play in the Independence Bowl, which actually has a better payout than some of the other games after Christmas, which I do think is interesting, uh, then, then get a P5. But I don't even think the payout even matters. I mean, what, what mattered to BYU when they went independent, we talked about this a few months ago, was that they would someday be invited into a P5. If we were in a situation where BYU wasn't going to the Big 12 as we sit today and we see the ceiling that's keeping us from the big money bowls, we would see, yes, independence is keeping us from our goal. We can't get past 
this wall that keeps us from the New Year's Six or the playoff. Uh, and so it's unsustainable, and all those arguments come into play. But having been invited to the Big 12, uh, we're going to the promised land, so to speak, where there are big bowls and there's access to the biggest of bowls without politics and prayer and <laughs> luck and <laughs> four scenarios that have to go this way or that. Uh, that's the road we're going to. What I hope for BYU fans and the theme we've had all year long is enjoy this moment. This is a spectacular season. The team's going to go to a bowl game, and they win it. They're going to have 11 wins. And potential to be a top 10 team. And the potential of having all but like two guys back next season. Wild. We'll talk about the hype leading into this season oh from goodness. last season. It'll be nuts going into this next season. And that's what this show lives for. Yes. Hype and people going nuts. <laughs> uh, so I think it's going to be good. What do you think? I am okay with BYU's bowl game situation regardless of, of where they go. I, re I really am. I, I look at what BYU's resume has become 10 and 2. I'm with you. I would prefer an eighth power five team. Yeah. It'd be fun. We'd have a month to get ready. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more time than December 18th in Shreveport. But if it's LSU, and Brett McMurphy was the guy that first put that idea out that just maybe LSU could make the relatively short drive up to Shreveport from right. Baton Rouge and take on BYU. I think BYU fans at that point were like, ooh, okay, well, maybe the Independence Bowl wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. But it becomes kind of a de facto road game taking on LSU in Shreveport. And maybe Bayou Brian Kelly is there. Who knows? <laughs> I, who knows? I, I, don't I hope know. he's the PA announcer. That would okay. be awesome. But BYU <laughs> has a contractual tie with Conference USA, which would likely be UTSA. And I just think BYU fans want another Power 5 opponent sure. because of what the Cougars have done against the seven P5 opponents. They're 6-1. and one. It'll be a step back, although – it might be a better opponent than some of the P5s. Yeah, absolutely. But, but emotionally, it would be like, uh, Texas San Antonio. I even went on my mission to Texas San Antonio, and and I don't even think that would be a great <laughs> matchup. But Texas San Antonio could beat BYU or whoever they play. It's just the name, and it's like, ah, uh, you know what? Let's let's get something better than that, even if it's a, be a, a lesser opponent. Yes. Bigger name, lesser opponent. Uh, some people want more money. As opposed to this payout, Location. I don't think money's even matters. We're going to the Big 12. Money today does not matter. No. And, and, th and think about this. Shreveport, for what it's worth, I do not think that BYU will end up in Shreveport. There are too many scenarios with Power 5 conferences not being able to fulfill all of their bowl obligations right. that ESPN's going to say, hmm, this is the 12th ranked team in the country. I don't think we should put them in Shreveport on December 18th. I think we should find them a better opponent and get more eyeballs on the game and work together all so that we can sell more advertising right. and make more money. If ESPN and ABC was a philanthropy, then, uh, <laughs> then yes, we'd be in the middle of the day against, you know, Bo Diddley Tech yeah. would come out of the... But uh, but they're not. It's all business. So let's just see where they think the business is. Just maybe, and this would make a lot of sense... The Fiesta Bowl Commission, they run the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. And Arizona knows all about BYU's impact. Yeah. 30,000 fans plus when BYU opened up the season in Glendale. You saw it firsthand. Yeah, it was nuts. That was madness when the Kalani Satake era began. And then in Las Vegas to open this season, BYU had 40,000 fans at Allegiant Stadium. They will show up if they are in an area that is densely populated by members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Wouldn't it be cool you got you got Vegas, you have L.A., and then you'd have Glendale. Three road venues in the same season where BYU fans packed. Every game's a home. And they didn't pack uh, the Coliseum because it's, it's so big, but they put in 20,000, 30,000 fans. Over Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. Which yeah. is unbelievable. So I like to think that ESPN, they're smart, and they want to make money. And if it's not the Fiesta Bowl, why not – the junior varsity game, if you will, to the Fiesta Bowl, which is the guaranteed rate bowl against a Big Ten opponent, by the way. Like Penn State. Or Minnesota or Purdue. It would be a quality Big Ten team. So you get your Power Five thing. You have an Arizona location. It's warm. There's a ton of BYU fans there. The payout's not as much, but it's way cheaper to get your team there. So maybe it's a wash with the difference in price there and the payout. So I, I kind of like the guaranteed rate bowl on December 28th. Yeah, makes sense to me. Or the Sugar Bowl.
or the sugar, <laughs> or the Fiesta Bowl. Or the Fiesta Bowl. Our or question of the day. Those, Rose Bowl, Pac-12, <laughs> get that going for us. What is the most important thing for you, BYU Sports Nation, when it comes to a bowl game for the Cougars? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At MG4GBit on Twitter says, This year, my most important things are to get Tyler Algier over Luke Staley's rushing record. Hmm. Have Jaron Hall pass Taysom's, or sorry, have Algier pass Taysom's rushing touchdown record and get one last win before this pro back among college kids goes and gets paid while he's healthy. I think he's passed Taysom already on the touchdowns, but he's got a ways to go on the yards for Staley. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. take a major performance in a bowl game. Okay, at Wayne's World underscore Davis on Instagram. Probably the snacks. I'm looking forward to the snacks. Do I go wings or nachos or go big and smoke some ribs? So snacks during the bowl game. Wow. He had me at nachos. <laughs> he had me at nachos. Coming up on this big show, Utah State and BYU, do they now have the same love in common? <laughs> For St. Mary's. Randy Bennett has done it again. Come on, Randy. <laughs> Plus, Greg Rubel previews BYU's matchup with Santa Clara in the College Cup. The Vengeance Tour continues. Look, he's got his game face on. Of course he, he does. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. I'm fully supportive of your father's decision. This family needs time out. We said peace and quiet. You don't get quieter than this. Oh, you mean it's haunted? I shall become their living nightmare. We aren't Ghostbusters. I have a plan. It's nice to meet you. I am cussed. This place is starting to feel like home. How do you plead? For mercy. For love is always <laughs> with you. And love is stronger than death. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Soccer faces the defending national champion Santa Clara Broncos tonight in the semifinal of the College Cup. In basketball, we call it the Final Four. Greg Rubel will have the call live on BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143, and the app starting at 9.30 Eastern Time tonight, 7.30 Mountain. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play on a Friday. I am Spencer Linton alongside Dave McCann. You just brought up Greg Rubel. Who better to speak with on this day than the man who, as we mentioned, is calling the match tonight live on BYU Radio. Greg Rubel from the Bay Area, BYU and Santa Clara. Greg, it's fantastic to have you on this Friday show, and it's amazing to be talking College Cup finally for this BYU women's soccer team. Yeah, morning, Spencer. Morning, Dave. Uh, yeah, this is Jennifer Rockwood's 27th season in the game as BYU's head coach. And her illustrious career, which includes so many, you know, resume milestones among the very best in the game for more than a quarter century now, 
And, and finally, she gets to coach in her first college cup. I'm thrilled for her. Of course, very excited for this team that took heartbreak from the spring and, and turned it into this triumph in the fall and really used what happened in the spring to get to this point. And it's kind of cool that the revenge tour continues, if you will. Uh, BYU was knocked out of the NCAA tournament in the spring by Virginia. Well, they beat Virginia to get here. Um, they lost to South Carolina in the NCAA tournament a few seasons back, got knocked out of that. Well, they beat South Carolina to get here. Uh, they have Santa Clara, and Santa Clara defeated BYU on October 30th uh, to, share a, to win a piece of the WCC championship. And now the Cougars get Santa Clara here. Uh, on the Broncos home pitch. So uh, Coach Rockwood talks about how these little motivations are actually pretty helpful to see these other teams on the other side of the bracket or, or, or down the line in your bracket. And the Cougars have had those kinds of challenges kind of, uh, you know, propel them on here in this NCAA tournament run. So BYU scored more goals than anybody in the country, uh, but they didn't score any goals against Santa Clara, got shut out 1-0. Uh, does that make them the underdogs tonight, or do they come in as the high-flying, goal-scoring favorites? Well, I, I don't think Jerry Smith, the head coach of Santa Clara, would have been surprised had BYU won that October game, you know, 2 or 3 nil or 2 or 3-1. Uh, BYU, in the first 15 minutes of that match, hit two goalposts and a crossbar and was just peppering the net and had nothing to show for it. And soccer's a funny game that way. You can... You can look like and play like the better team. The stats can be in your favor. And yet, you know, if, if, if you're not finding the back of the net, especially early as the Cougars had chances to do, the game can really turn and change. And so I think the Cougars felt good about their performance. I think Jerry himself has conceded. BYU, uh, the, the Broncos could have, you know, been down one or two nil early in that match. And then BYU back in the spring in a non-conference game because of COVID scheduling did come to Santa Clara and, and win a match uh, there. Uh, and, and so the, uh, the Cougars know what it's like to come on the road here and get a win. That happened to be a non-conference game, but they've done it, and, and Jen's done it. And the Cougars have gained results here in the past. They have a number of draws to go along with that one win. Now it's about getting the full three points tonight. But I think, yeah, even back to that day at Santa Clara, BYU felt like they probably earned a better result than they got in that 1-0 defeat. Greg Rubel is with us on BYU Sports Nation, previewing BYU and Santa Clara in the College Cup tonight. You outlined beautifully the Vengeance Tour, which I love. I feel like it's almost poetic how it has built up to this, Greg. And this team kind of feels like, I almost hate to say this phrase, the, the team of destiny with the Vengeance Tour worked in. Is there something to that, or am I just, you know, wearing the blue goggles? No, I, I, I think team on a mission is a pretty fair way to describe what BYU has going right now. Uh, you, you're, you're kind of peaking. You're playing your best soccer at the right time. Uh, the goals are pouring in. They're still very stingy defensively. You have two All-Americans now playing alongside each other. Uh, Michaela Coulihan has done things that almost no other soccer player in BYU history has done. It feels like her time. And and Cam Tucker is, is just a, a straight sniper right now. Every mm -hmm. time she gets a chance, she's finding the back of the net. So those two playing together the way they are. Uh, Brecken Mozingo has just not necessarily flipped a switch, but as the season has gone along, gotten better and better and better and more confident. I love the lineup Jen Rockwood puts out there right now. And it's kind of interesting that uh, they had, you know, five all-region selections uh, just yesterday or two days ago. And, and they come at keeper, on the back line, in the midfield, and up top. <laughs> I mean, every position on the field, every area on the field is essentially covered for BYU. That's depth of strength. And the Cougars have that right now. Coolahan's hoping to start uh, and, and wear that BYU jersey at least two more times uh, in this one and in the championship, and then and then we'll see. But uh, is she the greatest soccer player in the history of BYU? Well, she's the most decorated right now, and and you know times have changed. You know, Shauna Robach set some records that will never be touched. You know, back in the late '90s, uh, women's soccer was a different game then than it is now, a quarter century later. And, and yeah, Michaela got a little more out of her career than most players with the extra year due to COVID. But, you know, the number of conference players of the year, unprecedented. Uh, the number of All-America citations, unprecedented. And to be as good in, in, in the areas in which she is good is, I think, almost unprecedented at BYU. She is second in goals. She's second in assists, career. And she's also a great defensive player. That doesn't get enough attention. Uh, Michaela defends 
as hard as she attacks. And not every coach finds that player on their roster. You can have gifted goal scorers or gifted distributors. Uh, but she is someone that cares as much about getting the ball back as she does at getting, as getting the ball to the back of the net. That's what makes Michaela really, really special. Cannot wait to watch Michaela and the Cougars take on Santa Clara tonight. We're talking with Greg Rubel as he prepares uh, for that call. I want to spin the wheel of BYU sports awesomeness and switch gears a little bit, Greg, with you and talk football specifically. BYU awaits their bowl game scenario, whatever it might be. We'll, we'll know on Sunday. Uh, we all hope that the cards fall right and the Fiesta Bowl is like, yep, BYU, we want you. Let's put you in a New Year's Six game. Now, if that is not the case and things don't fall into place, what does BYU want and need most in a bowl game that is not a New Year's Six scenario? Well, you're always looking for the best competition. I think you guys alluded to this already. Um, and, and sometimes you get good competition from unexpected places. Um, you might find in, in some years uh, a G5 with an undefeated record, for example, that ends up in your bowl, that's pretty good competition. I think that the Independence Bowl was hoping for that when they were targeting, you know, BYU and, and UTSA. And, of course, that undefeated component uh, fell by the wayside. Uh, ultimately, you want a place that your fans can get to, will get to, will want to get to, and you want the best possible competition to face. And, uh, yes, they're targeted to, for a certain place. They're hopeful for another place. And then there's that whole gray area in between the postseason destinations that may, you know, require some wiggle room on behalf of networks and leagues and BYU to get something fun done there as well. So I guess I'm more uh, intrigued uh, than I am anxious uh, about what's to happen. Uh, and of course, by the same token, you're also very hopeful that scoreboard watching might pay off this weekend because, you know, there's still a chance that uh, that the New Year's Six discussion becomes a real thing on Sunday afternoon in that committee room if, if enough things break BYU's way. Now, last week wasn't a great week for things to break BYU's way, but there's one more week for games, uh, you know, to, to, to go the Cougars' way. And it would be nice if a bowl simply had a preference, but they're kind of bound by protocol in which, you know, the rankings kind of dictate where these at-large teams get slotted. So there has to be some movement for BYU to get what it's, uh, you know, what it and its, and its supporters most want this weekend. Greg, how surprised were you to hear on uh, ESPN and and moved all over Twitter yesterday that Bronco Mendenhall was going to retire or, not, or resign after the bowl game for Virginia and uh, and all his staff and everybody appears to be out. Uh, the AD and the school president there in Virginia tried to keep him in, but uh, he's not going to do it. How surprising was that for you? You know, a couple of weeks ago, Dave, uh, I was with BYU Women's Soccer in Charlottesville and BYU was practicing on one field and Broncos football team was practicing on the adjacent field. And after the soccer practice ended, I hung around and, and waited for Virginia's practice and their Thursday's hero presentation to wrap up. And I was able to, to chat with Bronco when I wasn't able to, when he came to Provo because of the timing of our pregame movements. So we, we had a chat and we hadn't seen each other in, in, you know, six years and it was fun to catch up. And, and during that time, he said a lot of really, you know, deeply resonant things, and and they were, and they really focused on the difference that he felt he was able to make in a place like Charlottesville, and a program like Virginia. And now I look back at that conversation in retrospect, and and I really do have a greater sense of the, um, I don't know, the, the the feeling that he felt he had already done some something that that he wasn't able to do at other places in his career. And evidently, you know, the, the decision came that, that that sense was more of maybe satisfaction and completion. And he spoke during that conversation about challenge and opportunity and constantly wanting to be inspired and invigorated. And that's led him to this decision. And so in some ways, the timing might be surprising, but in a lot of ways, it's very much playing to type and, and, and who Bronco Mendenhall is at the core um, someone who's, you know, forever curious and striving and yearning for the next great challenge or opportunity. And so in a lot of ways, it makes a great deal of sense. In a lot of ways, you wonder why and why now. Um, and, you know, coach one more game, of course, get through that bowl game. But uh, clearly uh, a unique and exceptional individual, a coach, a leader. And uh, we are all curious to see what his next challenge will be. Very well said on Bronco Mendenhall. We are talking with Greg Rubel. Before you go, Greg, let's spin that wheel of BYU sports one more time. And you brought up intrigue for the bowl scenario for the Bronco Mendenhall situation. 
But I'm wondering if you're feeling anxiety about BYU men's basketball after Gavin Baxter so unfortunately went down with another season-ending injury, and now there's some real concern about the depth of the big man situation for Mark Pope's guys. Uh, what are you feeling around BYU basketball, and how do they shore up that situation as they get ready for a pretty good Missouri State team? Yeah, very curious to see how the Cougars bounce back. And and this is not an easy stretch into which BYU ventures right now. No, nor has any part of the season been easy to this point. But you, you play at a good Ken Palm team on the road at Missouri State. Another in-state game. And Justin Bean and the Aggies uh, lurking next week. You play, you travel to play Creighton. Another in-state state game turns around with Weber on the back end. The tournament in Hawaii, all while you're trying to adjust to this, you know, uh, almost unfathomable personnel blow with Gavin Baxter going down for a third straight season injury after season ending injury. You hope that the sickness that went through the team resolves itself. You get Gideon George back. You hope that at some point, you know, Richard Howard makes a return to, to kind of shore up the inside, you know, forces, but it's a, it's a, a, a tenuous time right now for BYU having taken the, 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 the mental gut punch beyond the actual, you know, personnel impact of the Gavin Baxter injury. You know, that, that injury kind of changed that game to an extent and, and changes the, the short term as well for this team as they find out how to adjust as well. So it was a, I don't want to use the word devastating, but a really damaging night uh, for BYU from which they have to recover in a lot of different ways. And I guess I'm, I'm curious and intrigued to see how it is that Coach Pope and, and his guys rally at Missouri State because what I still think that in the regular season, BYU under Mark Pope has yet to suffer consecutive losses. Right. I think the only back-to-back -back losses came last year in the postseason with Gonzaga and UCLA. So I think they're still in a situation where in the regular year they haven't had that, you know, back-to-back -back loss situation. So let's see how they do respond because it's been a real hallmark of their team in the past is the ability to be resilient and bounce right back with a win after a tough L. Yeah, those back-to-back -back losses against two Final Four teams are a little bit more understandable yeah. <laughs> in a postseason scenario. Uh, but, man, uh, another massive weekend for BYU sports, the third really in a row. Greg, have a great call tonight. We'll be dialed in, and uh, hopefully we're rooting for BYU women's soccer on a national championship Monday. Yeah, we'd love, we'd, we'd love for this to get into the weekend. And uh, you know, right now, the NCAA championship is scheduled for Sunday. It's a Friday-Sunday scenario, but they will move it to Friday-Monday if the Cougars get the result tonight. So we hope that there's a schedule change in the offing <laughs> and that the Cougars get to, uh, get to spend the weekend here in the Bay Area. Spencer, Dave, great to be with you. Good to see you guys. Great to talk to you, Greg. The man, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rebell in the Bay Area. And everybody needs a family night featuring a national championship on Monday. Absolutely. It's a great activity. <laughs> it's, a great, it's fun for the whole family. All right, coming up, uh, we'll have more on this Bronco Mendenhall situation, but we'll look at the angle of what it could mean for BYU football here in Pro Bowl. And we know BYU owns the Pac-12 in football. They said what this banner what tells me. What the banner says, uh -huh. the banners do not lie. But is the West Coast Conference a better basketball conference than the Conference of Champions? We'll discuss that as well. This is BYU Sports Nation. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land, where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001.
Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Tomorrow, 12th ranked BYU, and they're still ranked number 12. Go to Springfield, Missouri, take on Missouri State. This quad one type game for the Cougars. Great bounce back opportunity. 3 o'clock Eastern time with Cougar pregame live. Jason Shepard with the play by play, along with Mark Duran on BYU Radio and the app. At 4 Eastern Time, CBS Sports Network will have the visuals if you want to do that all tomorrow. That's a great opportunity to bounce back and stay in the top 20 if they can win that game. Here's hoping the Cougars don't shoot like the 332nd best three-point shooting team in the country, which they currently rank. Ouch. Think about that and the fact that they have only lost one game. If a few more three-pointers go in, this team is dangerous. What else? Tag on Alex Barcelo, who's over 50% shooting threes. That's how bad the rest of the team is. Goodness. Let's go. Let's Come go. Let's he go. is Dave McCann. I am Spencer Linton. This is a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get more content throughout the day, follow us on all of the major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Dave, lead us off. Last night, our friend Gavin Baxter put out a tweet that said, thank you, Cougar Nation. I had fun. Does this signal the end of Baxter's BYU career? I think it likely does. Selfishly, I don't want it to. You know, I'm listening to some doctor's opinion saying, look, it was his other knee. He had his one knee, his right knee already surgically repaired. Let's repair the left knee. And then he's good. Then he can play some more. But uh, I just think this this is it. The other side of that is he already knows what it's like to rehab one knee and yes. how painful that is. And now he's got to rehab it another way. And if, you have to rehab it differently if you're coming back to competition as opposed to just living your life. Yep. Um, and before the injury, he had indicated that even though he has another year, due to COVID, that he wasn't going to come back for next year. I, I, let's hope he comes back. There's always the chance that he can. Sure. But he's got a painful road of rehab ahead, and uh, our hearts go out to him. And he is the emotional leader of that team. Richie Harward was the emotional leader. Gavin is the kind of leader they all watched come back twice from the brink and then to play and, and the lift, and I think that was the most deflating, was the emotional deflation of watching him laying on the floor oh, for his teammates after they watched him go through everything twice just to be able to join yeah. them. And uh, it's a total gut punch, but uh, Gavin's a fighter. He's got big things coming up, and uh, we wish him the very best. Speaking of fighting, Utah State fans are ready to fight Randy Bennett, <laughs> the head coach of St. Mary's. Come on, Randy. <laughs> After a heated exchange and an emotional, controversial finish in Logan last night, a St. Mary's winner, Randy Bennett, was pouring it on, egging on the fans, leaving the arena. Who has a stronger dislike for Randy Bennett right now, Dave? Is it BYU fans or Utah State fans? Here's the thing about Randy. We've all interviewed him one-on-one. -on -one. He's delightful. Yeah, he's great. He's great to hang out with. He shares stories. He, he this and that. But then he gets on the court and he gets in the... The, the costume that he's got on, and something changes. <laughs> and, man, he ticked off everybody at the Spectrum last night. He's got enough friends because he obviously wasn't going to Logan looking for new friends. No, not at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, recency bias, Utah State fans probably are feeling a more intense uh, vitriol <laughs> for Randy Bennett. But that'll change when St. Mary's visits the Marriott oh, Center man. in Pro Bowl this year. When I think of the name Randy, I think of Ralphie, and Randy's his little brother uh, with the Christmas story. <laughs> and I said, Randy, come on, Randy. Anyway, that's how oh, he rolls. Okay. Joey Brackets has BYU as a seven seed in the latest bracket out this morning. That's after the loss at Utah Valley. Okay. He's got the WCC as a four-bid conference. Whoa. Four bids would be one more than the three Pac-12 bids that are currently projected. So the question becomes, <laughs> is the Conference of Champions even relevant anymore <laughs> when stacked up to either BYU in football or the WCC in basketball? Right now, the Pac-12 is secondary to the West Coast Conference. A four-bid league. 
as a non-power six conference in college basketball. That's amazing. Yeah. And they're just getting better. Gonzaga's not going to be worse. St. Mary's, that's a big win at, at Spectrum last night. Um, and uh, and BYU, but some big games still ahead. They'll just start there on and then top 15. And then Pepperdine and some of the San Francisco, I think, still undefeated. All of the major college basketball reporters and analysts are calling this the year of the WCC. This isn't even a narrative that it's being that's being driven by the hype train in Studio B of BYU Sports Nation. They started it. It's John Rothstein and it's Jeff Goodman and all of those guys and Seth Greenberg. They're all calling this the year of the WCC. So right now. Yeah, the Pac-12 is secondary to the West Coast Conference. I was more excited about that upcoming game with Gonzaga, the upcoming two games with Gonzaga, and maybe three games with Gonzaga before uh, Gavin Baxter's injury. Now, we should also note BYU women's basketball and the latest Charlie Cream women's bracketology on ESPN is a five seed. Five seed for the women, seven seed for the men. Good positions to be in. Yeah, they never respect the West, so it's nice to see them knowing there are good basketball teams out here that aren't named Stanford. <laughs> uh, and, and BYU is legit. Chance to go 8 0 against another P5. Happens to be in the Pac 12. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, on Saturday night, we wish him well up in Salt Lake. All lining up for another super Saturday of BYU sports. I wore the shirt I have on for very obvious reasons today. Is Taysom everyone getting Hill. a good shot of that? Can you? The hurdle. That's, that's the hurdle. Over the University of Texas, you can make an argument that Texas's football program has never been the same since they met Taysom Hill. Seriously. <laughs> Just to the right of that picture is Blaine and myself watching <laughs> him do that while we were down there for uh, for C2K and. Uh, Phenomenal. And then last night he does it again. Yeah, what was your reaction when you saw him do it again? I said, I've seen this picture uh -huh. before. It was and beautiful. So then I got out my phone and I tweeted him, put them side by side. And then all of a sudden it goes, hey, wait a sec. That's Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Dallas, <laughs> Texas. And uh, it's been warmly received. Every now and then a good tweet comes along. But uh, that was the fun part of last night. Mm -hmm. The less fortunate part was when Taysom hit his finger on the arm of a cowboy pass rusher early in that game. And now that sounds like there might be some big trouble coming for Taysom. Uh, Ian Rappaport tweeting out just a short time ago. Taysom Hill feared to have suffered a torn tendon no. in his middle finger that may necessitate surgery at some point, sources say. More tests are coming. The injury called the mallet finger was one of the ailments that Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson had earlier this year, which That's, he still is. Yeah. He's back, but he's not back. It's caused all sorts of problems for Russell Wilson. Well. I hate this for Taysom Hill. He's been dealing with a plantar fasciitis situation in his foot. He obviously had a really significant and severe concussion. It's just one thing after the other. It's just bad luck. David Nixon was there to support his brother-in-law last night. And I text him, I go, I hope that finger isn't broken. And uh, now we find out that maybe a tendon in there, this might require some surgery. We'll keep you posted. I hate it. Well, we can understand uh, now more why four interceptions happened last night. I mean, he's playing with a splint on his finger with a torn tendon. Yeah. Good My grief. fantasy roster thanks him for that 70-yarder, though, at the end of the game. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Taysom. Would BYU Volleyball beating Boise State tonight make you feel any better about the football team <laughs> losing that game to the Broncos on that rainy, cold day where they turned it over four times? No. I wish it, either. I wish it did make me feel better, but no. And BYU women's volleyball will beat Boise State tonight. It's yeah. going to happen. They're awesome. But it, it does not make up for the frustration that we all feel, including BYU football heavily, about losing to the Broncos in football. Plus, it's never happened in volleyball. There's never been a fumble in volleyball. <laughs> so volleyball is going to get that done. Get that done. And volleyball's not going to be minus four in the turnover no. margin against Boise State. No, they aren't. Coming up, we're going to submit our double down predictions for Missouri State. Tomorrow's bounce back opportunity for the BYU basketball team. And the college football coaching carousel keeps on a turning. How will it affect the future of BYU football and Kalani Satake's staff? This is BYU Sports Nation. Notice she said staff. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected.
I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Sundays are a day to reconnect with things that uplift our spirits. We have searched the globe to bring you inspirational stories that stir the soul and nurture our relationship with the divine. Gather your family and join us for Hello Sunday, a program with stories, music, and more that will rejuvenate you for the week to come. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Today on BYU SN Right Now, Kiki will get you ready for all the big games this weekend. Check it out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We are live on BYU Sports Nation right now, as in we are right happening now. live That's in right. Studio B. Right now. And we are discussing at this moment the college football coaching carousel, which as many BYU fans have been so keen to notice, with Kalani Satake stock rising, he has been a very, very popular candidate to potentially replace all of these major positions around college football that have opened up. But, Dave, we have seen in recent days a lot of these big-time jobs get filled at USC and at LSU and Penn Notre State. Dame today. Michigan State are hanging on to their guys. Notre Dame has now found their guy in Marcus Freeman. So – does this lessen the anxiety level for you surrounding Kalani that maybe some very significant and wealthy suitor comes in and says, we will give you more money than you know what to do with Kalani? Yes, yes. Is it this? You feel less yeah. anxiety. There, there are no suitcases in his car, um, and I'm not sure there ever were any. Uh, outside of the inner circle, it makes for great radio and newspaper articles of what if and oh no and – and uh, how do I get a fan base jacked up so I can have a radio show today? I'm going to tell them it's probably going to happen, even though I have no idea. <laughs> and so that's what's gone on the last few weeks. And it's in every market wherever there's a big coach and wherever there's a fan base that fears that someday their guy is going gonna, is gonna to leave. And I think that's what we've seen here. I think, uh, I think it's been documented on this show and, and, and some of the people that actually know what's going on, that, hey, there needs to be uh, more money for staff. Yes. There needs to be more staffers. And, and I say that because they're, they're preparing for a Big 12 staff, not a Mountain West staff or an independent no. staff. And, and it's um, minuscule compared to those Power right. High programs. And the budget's going to grow, and you've got to project – what you're going to pay with the projection of the budget coming in to keep the guys that, that you really, really want. And some are going to leave for better jobs on staff. More power to them. That's why they're in the business. Everyone wants to be a head coach. Yeah. So you got to do some things to become a head coach. But BYU's head coach um, loves it here, has always loved it here, has had some points that he's needed to get addressed. I believe those have been addressed. We'll see in the coming days. But uh, I have zero anxiety that Kalani is going to not be at BYU for a number of years or until he decides someday that maybe he's going to surprise everyone and retire okay. like Bronco did. You know, I, 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 that, I have zero anxiety for that. I'm with you on that anxiety level spectrum. Kalani Satake is going to remain at BYU. Let, let's just go ahead and say it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm not going to be wrong. He's staying at BYU. He's, he has so much going here with the transition to the Big 12. And if, as you said, Dave, he has his bullet points of what he needs now fulfilled, and we will find out if those things have happened, if a contract extension has been offered and accepted in the, in the coming days, but if those bullet points have been hit, then why would you go anywhere? Look at what's happened to recruiting. He's won 21 of his last 24 games. He's been in every college football playoff poll in the last two years. It's unbelievable. Finally got the monkey off the back of beating Utah. BYU's independence has been yeah. fulfilled. The reason to go independent was to make yourselves more viable for a Power 5 conference, and it happened. And I think what I, what I love is that uh, he's an example, and, and Mark Pope's another example, of two guys who get paid really well, and, uh, and they know that, 
Um, and the fact that they love their job trumps the fact that they could go out and make more money. It's such a big deal in life uh, to enjoy where you are uh, and be compensated where you feel like you're respected, and, and that can always that can always improve. But to, to chase the hundred million dollar thing um, and leave what you love, hoping that money makes you love this place over here, that's not the guarantee. What is a guarantee is, I really love my job here. I get paid well, and now I'm going to get more from my staff. This is good. You know, there's actually more to do with life than actually coaching football. Yes. But I get to do this and live that part of my life, which is a little more important, man, that's more than worth $100 million. Yeah. I don't as, care. Long as, you're, as long as you're paid fairly. I don't care if the Oregon job comes open and Mario Cristobal ends up in Miami, Kyle Whittingham retires and leaves Utah. I feel confident Kalani is remaining at BYU. What we do know is that Bronco Mendenhall is not going to stay at the University of Virginia, which kind of came out of nowhere yesterday and took the college football world by absolute surprise. But his motivations for leaving Virginia are very different than most coaches right. leaving for those hundred million dollar jobs at USC and LSU. Now we have to wonder what the Bronco situation at Virginia with his staff full of so many former BYU players and guys that love Provo and love the stretch. Why, what does that mean for them? And we're not, you know, we're not, we, we can sit here and point to Kalani, but every m member of his staff that's been here for two years, they've also won 21 of the last 24. Yes, they have. Their Both stock sides is, of the ball. Their stock is rising, and there are coaching jobs opening up in the Mountain West of Colorado State, Fresno specifically State. yesterday in Fresno State. Does that mean that maybe some of Kalani's staff leaves and takes some of those jobs, opening up maybe a position where some of the Virginia guys yeah. can come back to BYU? I think, that does. I think that does. I think there will be some on this current staff that uh, go to get jobs that they see as better, that pay them more and give them an opportunity, especially those who want to be head coaches. I think the opportunity's there. And if I'm a, any kind of a Mountain West coach, for example, and I have an opening, I'm coming right to BYU, and I say, I want a piece of that. Yeah. 21 and 3, I want a piece of that. Um, and so I think, there, I think we'll see some movement there, which, which might open some doors for some guys to come back. Uh, that's the joy and the sorrow of being successful. And BYU is successful. And so I think we're going to see some of that. Well, I can tell you this much. I know some BYU fans were like, what if Bronco Mendenhall came back and was Kalani's defensive coordinator? It's not happening. No. It's not happening. No, and he's not going to the U either to succeed Whittingham. It's just a <laughs> couple of things that aren't going to happen. Those are two of them. There you go. Oh, the coaching carousel. Fantastic time of year with BYU sports and so much speculation about what happens there. Right. Coming up, a rise and shout to a tournament weekend for BYU. It starts in just a few hours. And uh, let's discuss BYU men's basketball, the matchup with Missouri State, using some double-down projections. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BYU TV. <laughs> Come with us to a place where new beginnings and second chances have room to grow. Where 
past and future are present, and your fondest dream is so close, you can almost reach out and touch it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review these guys. Yeah. Because they love it. Their confidence <laughs> level rides all day long on the reviews you give. Let's double down. <laughs> it's a ball night for BYU basketball. Well, I should say a ball afternoon on Saturday against Missouri State. Here's how it works. We give two predictions. Each one we get correct is worth one point. If you get both correct, you're in a bonus point for a total of three possible points. Jerem has a 12-5 lead over me. He's absent today, so here are his picks. He says, number one, BYU will have four or fewer turnovers at the 743 mark of the first half. He needs a life. <laughs> number two, it gets better, Dave. <laughs> there will be four or fewer dead ball rebounds in the game. What is a dead ball rebound? Good luck. Good luck with those. I'm going to say BYU is going to shoot 40% from the field. After shooting miserably on Wednesday, that would be a step up. That's below their season average, but coming from where they've been, they need to get that would up be there. It's time to warm up. It's like the thaw going into the dead of winter. And then Alex Barcelo, he wasn't himself. He didn't come out and say he was sick or any of that stuff, but but we were watching him. He was pale the whole game. He didn't get ticked off one time, and that's not Alex Barcelo. He bounces back a career high on Saturday, Ooh. which would be 29 or more. Ooh, okay. Number one for me. 30, actually. 30. Be 30, because 29 30 is a for Barcelo. high. Yeah. yeah. Number one, Caleb Lohner. He's going to have a double-double, Dave. But is that for lunch, or is that on the floor? Okay. He's got the rebounding situation figured out. But he's going to add some scoring to that as well. He will have a double-double on the road. And T. John Lucas, after he, he had six turnovers against Utah Valley, he's going to have six or more assists and two or fewer turnovers. He's going to turn it around as well. Yeah, he'll be feeling better. Our question of the day, what do you want for a BYU bowl game scenario if it's not a New Year's Six game? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Nelson Call on Twitter says that Utah doesn't go to the Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I got some green shirts. I might I might put my jet shirt on later today. You know, it's green and white, just for the heck of it. Today's Rise and Shadows presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Dave, let's give a couple to the women's sports. Let's get it. Women's volleyball tonight, first round of the NCAA tournament. They're at the Smith Fieldhouse, taking on Boise State. They're on the quest to win a national championship. And women's soccer. And then uh, shout-out to Bronco Mendenhall and his staff of Virginia. A lot of BYU guys there. Our thanks to today's guests. Uh, Dave, we didn't have time for Dennis Petta, but we still love him. For Mr. Dave McCann, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to the Kreshmir Chosich family. Go Cougs, baby.